Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for June 27th, 2023. I'm teaching a series on the parables of Jesus, and I'm starting with what I call the mother of all parables. It is the parable of the sower. We're walking our way through this parable. We're at part 19 already. So this is almost four weeks, almost a full month into this series on the parable of the sower. And right now, yesterday, I shared a message on how you have to guard your heart and mind, the importance of being a good steward over your thoughts and how your soul does not discriminate. Whatever you allow to be sown into the soil of your heart is going to grow because your soil, the soil in your heart does not discriminate. So if you think thoughts of fear, failure, doubt, unbelief, defeat, and despair, those things will grow in your heart and they will choke out the word. The weeds will choke out the word. The, the weeds will overtake the word. However, if you meditate and meditate on what God said about you, and you believe, say, I believe what God believes about me. I believe what God believes about me. I see myself the way that God sees me. I walk over to the mirror and say, you know what? As Jesus is, so am I in this world. And I become a good steward of my heart and my mind. And I meditate on those things. Then the word will overtake the weeds and I will become, you will become the man or the woman that God is destined for you to be. So we're going to deal with that again today. I flowed in this vein yesterday. We're going to flow in this vein again today. Say this out loud. I guard my heart with all diligence. Get ready to receive the word. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about the fact that so many people are putting in the chat, I believe what God believes about me. That's actually, I heard that for the first time uh, from my spiritual father, Apostle Tony Brazelton, and um, it was life-changing. That, that all I really need to do is just believe what God believes about me I, so that I can become the man that God has called me to be. I have to believe God's opinion of me. I have to base my opinion on me on God's opinion of me, and I'm flowing in that vein uh, today. So th before we get into the parable, there's a scripture we've been looking at all year, Psalms 126 and verse 4. At our church, we're meditating on this because we believe that this is a season of refreshing and restoring for us. So this is what the Bible says. Now, Lord, do it again. Say, Lord, do it again. Restore us to the former glory. And then the psalmist says, may streams of your refreshing flow over us until any area that was dry gets drenched again. This is a season for dry areas. Say this, no dry areas for me. Any area that was dry will be drenched again. All right, so let's look at this parable. This is the mother of all parables. Jesus taught a parable of the sower. His disciples didn't understand it. When everybody was gone, they said, Jesus, can you explain it to us? This was Jesus's explanation. It's found in Mark chapter four, verses 13 through 20. He said, the farmer is like somebody that takes the seed. The farmer is God. The seed is the word. The soil is the people. Well, sometimes the farmer takes a seed and as he throws it, it falls along the path. Those are like the people that hear the word of God, but they don't understand it. And because their understanding is unfruitful, they're susceptible to Satan and Satan comes immediately and snatches away the word that was sown in their heart. All right. Other people are like the seed that, that's planted on rocky ground. What, what's up with these people? Well, they hear the teaching. They quickly and gladly accept it. They say amen in church. However, they do not allow the word of God to go deep into their lives. As a result, as soon as trouble comes, the persecution comes because of the word that they receive, because the power of the word is going to attract opposition from the enemy, they're quick to give up. Say this, say, I would never give up, right? I'm going to allow the word of God to go deep into my life so I, I so I don't give up. Other people are like the seed that's planted amongst the thorny weeds, and this is where we are right now. They hear the teaching, however, oh my God, you ever met these people? They love God. They go to church every Sunday, but their lives have become full of other things. What are the other things? Well, Jesus gave us three categories. He said the cares of this world, the love of money, and everything else they want, selfish desires. And so God wants to do great things in their lives. And they say that they want God to do great things in their lives. But honestly, their lives have become full of other things. And so they're more concerned with, oh, I can't give. I can't tithe. I can't write this check. Oh, God, you want me to give how much? Oh, no. The economy's crazy right now. Oh, my God. 
uh, the inflation is, oh, no, 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 God, what? No, nah, I'm not going to, this is my rainy day fund. You want me to give that? Oh, no. The cares of this world, they care more about the cares of this world than the things of God. They're not listening to the divine impulses of the Holy Spirit. Going into the second one, the love of money. No, money if money makes an excellent servant, but a poor master, you can't serve God in money. You can't serve God in mammon. And so, so now they're like, ooh, no, no, no. I need to keep this money. I need to keep this paper. It's all about money. So now they're allowing money. They're making money decisions instead of Holy Spirit decisions. And then the lust for other things. While God wants them to do this, they say, yeah, but I want to do that. And they place their desires above God's desires. And now the word doesn't work. And so all of this stuff happens. It chokes out the word and the word doesn't produce. Lastly, some people are like good ground. Say, I'm good ground. Okay. Now, what happens with good ground? Well, good ground doesn't do what the other three did, <laughs> right? So good ground understands the word. Say, I understand the word. Good ground allows the word to go deep. So it, good ground gets beyond surface level Christianity. And good ground doesn't have competing priorities. And so as a result, the word works and it produces a harvest, sometimes 30 times more, sometimes 60 times more, and sometimes 100 times more. Well, after I shared yesterday's message about how the soil in your heart does not discriminate, whatever you sow in your heart, the soil is going to crack it open and cause it to grow. Um, somebody texted me and said, man, you really brought Proverbs 4 and 23 to life this morning. Proverbs 4 and 23 is the scripture that I shared yesterday. I quoted it. So based on that, I want to share Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. I'm going to share it with you in three different translations, and then we'll get into our points for this morning. You ready? So Proverbs four and 23 from the New International Version. This is what the Bible says. Listen to this. It's the word of God. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. You, everything you do is flowing from your heart. Everything you do externally actually started internally, okay? New Living Translation, guard your heart above all else, for it, your heart, determines the course of your life. Okay, what, what course do you want your life to take is going to start in your heart. Good News Translation, be careful how you think, for your life is shaped by your thoughts. So your whole life is shaped and framed and determined by your thoughts. So your thoughts matter. So if your thoughts matter and the soil of your heart is fertile soil and it's going to call, it doesn't discriminate, it can grow the word, but it can also grow weeds. It's very important that you hold, that you steward your heart well so that you know what you're allowing in and what, what you're receiving and what you're rejecting. There, there's some things you can't receive. There's some things that people speak over me, over my life or whatever, and I'll be like, no, I don't receive that. You don't have to receive everything. There's some things you can receive and some things that you need to reject. You got it? All right, so let's talk about it. What does this mean for you today? I did all that to just set up the message. I have five things to share with you in this morning. As I get into these five things, I want you to be ready to receive. You ready? Five things. Number one, here we go. If you want to be successful as a believer, you must regularly examine the condition of your heart. And when I say heart, I mean like your inner man, your soul, your thoughts, your thought life. So you must regularly consider, examine, what's my perspective of life? How am I approaching this, right? Well, how am I thinking about this? How do I think about life? What is my life? How do I approach things? Am I approaching things from God's point of view? Take time to reflect on your thoughts, your attitudes, and your desires. Let's say, for example, you go to church on Sunday. You have a great worship experience. And then after the worship experience, you go to a restaurant. And at the restaurant, you didn't get the best service from the waiter or the waitress. And you went off or you somewhat exploded or you, you had an overreaction to the poor service. Well, you should probably consider that. Think about it. I'm not saying that you need to be okay with poor service, but you also don't need to be going off on these young people that are in college and trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so like at the end of the day, take time to reflect on your thoughts and your attitudes and your desires. Like, am I, am I living the right way? Am I, am I approaching things the right way? You should take time for self-reflection and introspection so that you can check the condition of your heart. Now, 
we're going to go to the Dominican Republic soon, and I'm praying about how much time off I'm going to take from today's word. But whenever I do take time off from today's word, I take that time for introspection. That's really my time, especially in the morning, especially when I'm on the beach. I love the beach. Like, so, so, you know, like my family loves going to the pool, like getting in the pool during the day. But when we're at a resort or something in the morning, I just like to go to the beach by myself. I get up before everybody anyway. So, so I like to go spend time with God on the beach. I go get my, like my coffee or whatever, my latte, and I go on the beach. And that time with God is just my, man, I don't know, man. I just love it. You should take time to consider your ways. You should take time to consider the, the content and the quality and the condition of your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you areas where you're not doing good, areas where that need to be surrendered to God, areas that, that, that need to be corrected. The Holy Spirit will provide you course corrections. You got to maintain a heart that is open. Say, my heart is open. Say this by faith. My heart is open. You got to maintain a heart that is open and responsive to the divine promptings of the Holy Spirit so that you don't go astray. The Bible says all we like sheep go astray. How do sheep go astray? Little by little. You know what happens with believers? They go astray little by little. It's the little foxes that, that spoil the vine. And so you got to be careful not to allow these little things to become big things. So surrender your, your heart to God and ask the Holy Spirit to show you where you have ungodly desires or the wrong motives or hidden sin or things that you don't want to address or you don't want to deal with. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you these things because you need to become a good steward of your heart. Put this in the chart, in the chat. I am a good steward of my heart. You got it? All right, number two. Sow the seed of God's word into your heart intentionally and consistently. And so I'm taking my time today because I really want you to get this. You got to get, I told you yesterday that your eyes are a gate. Whatever gets through your eyes gets down in your heart. Your ears are a gate. Whatever gets through your ears gets down in your heart. And so you must make the effort to sow the word of God through your eye gate, through your ear gate, intentionally and consistently. Now, what you know what's not going to happen? You can't just take the Bible, put it under your pillow and say, Lord, I'm about to go to sleep. I need you to transfer your word into my heart by osmosis. That's not how it works. And so, no, you have to get the word of God through your eye gate and through your ear gate intentionally and consistently. Now, thankfully for you, you watch today's word. And so every morning you give me 25 to 30 minutes for me to sow the word of God and you're getting it through your eyes and you're getting it through your ears. That's good. I appreciate that. However, this should not replace your own time with God. You should read, study, and meditate. Let me explain the, the difference. Read, study, and meditate. So you read to get breath. You study to get depth, and then you meditate to be changed. Let me explain. So you read, you can read, I don't know, you can read a chapter in five minutes, right? A chapter of the word of God. You can read a chapter in five minutes, but you can study one word for five months, <laughs> right? So you can read a chapter in five minutes. You could take one word from that and study it for five months. So you read just to get breath. You need to, to be familiar with the stories of the Bible. You just need to have a breath as it relates to the Bible. So you should read the Bible regularly and just read it. So when I'm preaching about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or the woman with the issue of blood, or Jairus and his daughter, you know the story. You've heard it before. You read it. You read to get breath. You study to get depth. So you study to go deep, and then you meditate to be changed. And after you read and you study, you meditate on what you read and you study so that your heart can be changed, and you can become the man or the woman that God called you to be. So when you do that, you're letting your heart be saturated. Say this. Say, I saturate my heart. You saturate your heart. You saturate your mind with the Word of God. And you know what? If you do that, it's going to bring forth a harvest. It's going to spring forth a harvest. What's going to happen? You're going to have spiritual growth. You're going to grow in wisdom. You're going to grow in understanding. Why? Because you're sowing the seed of God's word into your heart and the seed of God's word in your heart is going to take root and is going to bear fruit. So the more you saturate your heart, the more you saturate your mind with the word of God, the deeper its roots will grow. And what's going to happen? Your life is going to be changed. Say amen to that. I know that this is very basic. What I'm sharing with you today is basic, but it's very foundational and necessary. 
This is not like, you know, some deep revelation. Sometimes you need to be reminded of the basics. You got to get the word of God down in your heart and then you got to meditate on it. All right. Number three, choose to prioritize the word of God above all else. So you got to prioritize the word of God above all else. And so whatever the word of God is for you, you should have a personal conviction about it and then a, a prioritize it above all else. And so I'll, I'll use an example. We were just at a, uh, at a, a retirement ceremony. Um, and so let me just say this. I'm not trying to, to give my personal convictions over to anybody. I'm telling you what my personal convictions are. And so as it relates to me and my household, we don't drink, we don't smoke, and we don't gamble, right? I'm not trying to give you scripture for that. Look, I'm not doing that. Believe me, I'm not doing that. But I'm telling you for me, as for me and my house, that's how we live. And that's part of the personal conviction that I have of the Holy Spirit, right? I grew up around all that stuff. So we don't drink, we don't smoke, we don't gamble, and everybody knows it. Now, so at my house, we don't have alcohol because we don't drink and we don't, we don't promote that. And, and that's just not what we do, right? So we were somewhere, well, we were at a, at a celebration, at a retirement ceremony. Of course, there was alcohol there. And so while we were there, somebody mentioned that uh, the people that were staying at our house, that, oh man, at that house, that's a dry county over there. They don't have alcohol. And they got a good laugh out of it, right? But I, I have a conviction about that. So I'm good. Like I'm settled. Like there, there's never a question. When people come stay at our house and, and, and they, uh, sometimes the, the, the comment or the question comes up, well, such and such is coming and they like to drink this and this and that. Uh, are they going to have access to it? I said, not in my house. Why? Because that's not what I do, right? And so I, and, so, and once again, I'm not trying to put my convictions on you. Here's the point that I'm making. You got to have a standard for the word of God for you. Whatever the word of God is for you and whatever your personal conviction is, you have to prioritize that above all else. And you have to make a commitment to apply it to your life. And sometimes that, that means that you don't look like everybody else. And sometimes that means that you don't sound like everybody else or you don't act like everybody else, but that's okay. Like you have to be okay with being you. Once again, I'm not putting my convictions on you. For you, it could be something else. And I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else. <laughs> I love when Bishop T.D. Jake says, don't act like I'm, I can't act like I'm better than you because I don't have a problem with this thing, but I have a problem with this other thing. Believe me, I got my own issues. So, so I'm, I'm not trying to put myself above anybody else. My point is, whatever the word of God is for you, you got to have a personal conviction concerning it. And then you got to walk in that conviction now. And then you have to put it above everything else. Every, any other comments, you can read other books, but the word of God has to have first place. You can, you can watch other videos online. And, and, oh man, I watched this guy. He has some good comments. He has some good financial advice about this and that, but this thing right here, he said, doesn't line up with the word of God. I have the word of God above all else. So I will, I can glean some nuggets from this person, but I can't apply anything that's contrary to the word of God or to my personal convictions. If the Holy Spirit tells me not to do something, then I can't go against it. I don't care what any, if a financial planner says it, or somebody else says it, or my mama says it, or my auntie says it, I cannot go against the word of God for me. I have to prioritize the word of God above all else. And when you do that, you know what happens? It builds character. And you, when you do that, it not only does it build character, put in the chat, my character is being developed. Not only does it build character, it then positions you to embrace the grace to be the man of God or the woman of God that God has called you to be for such a time as this. People need to see something in you that, that is different from the world. People need to know that you are a man or a woman of your word and a man or a woman of your convictions. And whatever it is that you say that you believe, you should live it out. They don't have to agree with you. They don't have to like it. They don't have to do what you do. But at least they know that you are a man of integrity and a woman of integrity and your audio matches your video and your video matches your audio. And whatever that is, that's how you should be consistent day in and day out. And the church said, amen. You got it? All right. Number four, trust in the faithfulness of God's word. As a believer, you should trust in the faithfulness of God's word. Now, when the word of God comes to you and you get a word from God, you got to stand on those promises. I'm telling you that the soil in your heart does not discriminate. If you start allowing other things that are contrary to what God said to you, let's say you're, you're battling a disease right now and the word of the Lord came to you. And, and you said to your, your spouse, babe, guess what? God told me I'm healed. 
Now, I'm going to, God told me we have to go to these doctor's appointments. We got to take this treatment, but I know that I'm coming out on the other side of this. Then you cannot allow anything else than what God said to be sown into your heart because your heart does not discriminate. And so if you start to meditate on other things, believe me, those other things can grow up like weeds and choke out the word. So even when you do face challenges and setbacks, because newsflash, as a believer, just because God gave you a word doesn't mean that you're not going to face opposition and challenges and setbacks. You have to hold fast to what God said, even when it's painful, even when it doesn't look like it's going to work, even when it's getting worse before it gets better. That's how you experience the grace of God. You got to remind yourself of God's faithfulness. You got to tell your spouse, babe, I know what God said. There's no way God is going to fail us. I know it doesn't look right right now. I know it doesn't look good right now. I know it's getting worse before it gets better, but come on now. I know what God said. Come, God has never, he's never left us. He's never forsaken us and he's never let us down. And so I know that, that the seed of God's word has to bear fruit in due season. In the fullness of his timing, God is going to bring this thing to pass. Let's just believe God. Let's just stand on the promises of God. Let's keep believing. But babe, it's getting, but no, we're just going to believe God. But babe, look at this. I know, but let's just believe God. The unseen realm has to be more real to you than the seen realm. You got to trust in the sovereignty of God. You got to trust in the word of God. You got to trust in the faithfulness of God. You got to trust that God's word is going to come to pass. And so you're not going to allow something else to grow in your heart. Because if you start allowing fear, doubt, unbelief, worry to grow in your heart, those things are going to grow up like weeds and choke out the word. And if you do that, you're going to have a faith failure and it won't be God's fault. All right, number five, the last point for today. And I have a personal testimony tied to this one. Embrace the the responsibility of stewarding your heart well and do it by the grace of God. Say, I steward my heart. I'm a good steward of my heart. Let me explain. Stewarding your heart, remember, the heart does not discriminate. It will grow whatever you put in there. So you can't be, you can't sow seeds of fear, doubt, unbelief, worry, failure, none of that. Okay. If you steward your heart well, you understand the importance of protecting your heart because God will allow whatever you allow. God will permit whatever you permit. So God has given you the power and the grace to manage what you think about all day. Let me say that again. God has given you the power. God has given you the grace to manage what you think about all day. So you get to choose what you give your attention to. If you don't use this power, this grace well, then you're going to allow weeds to grow in your heart and you're going to feed those weeds. And in a sense, you will be sabotage, sabotaging your own life. You, you don't, you're doing it to yourself. And so you have to take intentional steps to remind yourself of what God said. You got to sow seeds of, feet, of faith and love and obedience and allow those to take root and then nourish yourself have an attitude of gratitude, meditate, meditate on on what God said and take the responsibility seriously that you cannot allow anything like fear or doubt or unbelief. I'm not going to let nothing negative come out of my mouth concerning it. I'm never going to speak against what God said. None of that. So let me use myself as an example as I close. I know the Lord led me to leave my former company, Worldwide Technology, which I loved by the way. And he told me to join Inspired Solutions because God has plans for Inspired Solutions. All right, cool. Now that I'm at Inspired, Proverbs 4 and 23, I, got, I have to guard my heart with all diligence. I had to do it before, but it's like, man, it's like the devil has ramped up his activity. So I have to guard my heart with all diligence. Satan is always constantly trying to sow, sow seeds of fear, doubt, unbelief, failure in my heart and in everybody's heart. Now, I wish I could tell you, I've been walking with God for almost three decades consistently. I wish I could tell you that there's a point that you're going to get to where you're exonerated from these thoughts, but you're not. Actually, the greater the assignment, the greater the attack. So remember the pattern that I shared with you early in in this series. God comes, right? When God comes, the word comes. When the word comes, faith comes. When faith comes, Satan comes, right? So Satan comes. So I know what God said to me about Inspired Solutions. I have to meditate on that. The more I remind myself of what God said to me about this company, the more I'm protecting and stewarding my heart, the more open I am to the divine impulses of the Holy Spirit. But to be clear, I have the power to steward my own heart and I have to do it. If I succumb to the attacks of Satan and I allow thoughts of fear, doubt, unbelief, failure to grow into my heart, now I'm not stewarding my heart well 
And now what's happening? I will open my heart to the enemy. And then this further drives home the importance of the fact that your heart does not discriminate. I can allow weeds to grow in my heart, just like I can allow the word to grow in my heart. I have to do it. I have to steward my own heart. Put this in the chat. I have to steward my own heart. You have to take responsibility for your own thoughts. You have to take responsibility. If I allow, if I allowed Satan to just give me the thoughts of fear and failure and doubt and unbelief, man, those things will grow like wildfire in my heart. And if they grow like that, then I have failed to steward my heart. And then now I can become susceptible to the enemy. And now I'm thinking things that I should not be thinking. As a believer, you have to embrace the grace to steward your own heart. Let me close with Proverbs 4 and 23 again. Guard your heart with all diligence, for it determines the course of your life. You got it? I hope that you got I took my time this morning. I broke this thing down. I'm really, I really want you to get it. You have to protect your own heart because your heart does not discriminate. It can grow fear. It can grow faith. You have to choose which one you're going to allow it to grow. All right, let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and declare this over your life. Say, Father, this is a season of refreshing and restoring for me. I commit to regularly examining the condition of my heart. I surrender any area of my heart that's not lining up with the word, and I'm quick to change. I am open and responsive to the divine promptings of the Holy Spirit. I intentionally and consistently sow the seed of your word down into my heart, and I meditate on it day and night. I prioritize your word, Father, above everything else. Your word is the foundation for my life and living. I trust in your faithfulness, even in the midst of challenges and setbacks, because you will never fail me. I steward my heart well. I manage my thoughts and emotions. I give my attention to things that you have spoken over me. I guard my heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of my life. Living this way, I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Tomorrow, I'm going to have another one. Please apply it and prosper. I know this is a little bit longer than normal. I apologize for the time, but I needed to get through this, and I pray that you really enjoyed it. I love you. God loves you more. Do me a favor. First of all, if you're not getting my notes, you get my notes for free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Number two, leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. Number three, share this message right now. You know other people need to hear this, right? Guard your heart with all diligence. Out of it flows the issues of life. I love you. God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to know more about our ministry or you would like to partner with us in what we're doing in the Caribbean, being a blessing to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic, then please go to ripministries.org. You'll be able to find out more information there. And if you'd like to make a donation, all the donations are tax deductible in the United States. A few months ago, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to set up a coaching and mentorship program. And Isabella and I set that up. And so now we make ourselves available on three different levels for those that want access to us and to learn things about maximizing your potential, increasing your personal productivity and fulfilling your life's purpose. If you're interested in that, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. And then lastly, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to write several books and journals to help people grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please go to rickpina.co if you don't have our material, and there's also apparel there as well. Listen, thank you for being a blessing to us. We pray that our ministry will continue to be a blessing to you.